This man strode like a colossus over Europe and ruled France like an emperor for more than a decade. But astonishingly, when he staked his career on a referendum concerning a relatively small point of reform, he lost. After being the living symbol of free France during the Second World War, de Gaulle came out of retirement in 1958 to save France from the brink of a civil war. That was over the crisis in Algeria. So began more than a decade of autocratic government conducted with all the conviction of a Napoleon. Churchill called him a man of destiny. The destinies of France and de Gaulle have been inextricably linked over the past 10 years, often at the expense of international relations. He antagonized America by reducing her influence in Europe, and Britain will certainly never forget his high-handedness in preventing our entry into the common market. But we can't help respecting him and admiring the extent of his influence as a Frenchman. Who but de Gaulle could have brought to an end a century of enmity with France's traditional adversary, Germany? Only de Gaulle could have had the nerve to visit Quebec and openly invite the French Canadians to seek independence. A Marco Polo among world statesmen, he penetrated further into the communist bloc than any Western leader and had the nerve to incite the Poles to break away from the Russians. Last year, he cut short a state visit to Romania to sort out the troubles at home. With the students at war in the streets, the workers on strike, the nation paralyzed, de Gaulle's answer was to challenge the left-wing elements. He ordered a general election, and the Gaullist victory was a landslide. Who but de Gaulle could have managed that? And who can now hope to fill his place and, with such command, guide the destiny of France? The greatest air race ever staged 